the great British countryside. Stunning, isn't it? When it isn't raining. But beneath its idyllic rolling hills and watercolour scenery, our landscape has kept the nation fed since the dawn of time. Over 60% of the food we eat has grown within our shores, but how long will this self-sufficiency last? Back in 2020, when coronavirus closed all our borders and Brexit was still an uncertainty, it was predicted that many thousands of tonnes of our fruit and veg would be left unpicked and rotting in our fields. As it is becoming increasingly difficult for the most of the EU citizens to come over here and work, the government had to act quickly. But they didn't. Despite the government's best efforts with Pick for Britain, a campaign aimed at getting furloughed Brits to pick our crops, only 5 to 11% of Brits filled in the 70,000 vacancies. The situation was so bad that it was reported one farm threw out three quarters of a million courgettes. I'm on my way to Wellwell Fruit Farm in Bridport, West Dalton, to meet farmer William Jackson. He said he's had a particularly difficult year on his farm this year. William took over his family-run farm 14 years ago. He grows apples and pears, and every year relies on migrants to pick his crops. His farm usually picks around 1,900 bins of fruit, which has an approximate weight of around 600 tonnes. This year, he says, his farm is picking around 800 bins. If we'd had a big crop this year, which we haven't, there would have been whole fields unpicked. Right. We just would not have had enough pickers. But uh, it's been a struggle. Have you been affected financially this year? The financial effect will be mainly from the frost, so lack of crop. Um, however, if we'd had a big crop, we would have been financially affected by not being able to pick the crop. Uh, Which been... would have led to fields rotting. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, there's, there's no way we would have picked this year's crop with, with the number of pickers we've got. Brexit has meant that um, we haven't been able to get our foreign guys, uh, which, is, which has affected us. Uh, coronavirus, I think, has changed the whole uh, labour market. William said the situation has also been made worse by the fact that hospitality now has record vacancies and that the British students who would usually work on a farm chose to work in a warm and dry hotel and restaurant instead. Normally when we, we advertise with Indeed and Facebook, we get pages of people wanting to work. This year there's been very few um, applications and we've pretty much had to take anyone on the list, which um, so you sometimes taking people you normally wouldn't. This picker is from Bulgaria and describes to me how difficult the work is. Oh, farming is hard job. It is hard work. It is weather is a lot of change all the time and people need to be ready to work on bad weather. The same on the very hot weather sometimes. It's hard work. It seems Brexit, coronavirus and weather issues created the perfect storm for farmers this year. Certainly from my visit here today, there is a notable lack of migrant workers picking our food. It is no surprise farmers have found themselves in this situation. There is a demand for 80,000 foreign seasonal workers in the UK. Since Brexit officially came into effect on New Year's Day this year, EU migrants could no longer benefit from free movement in Britain. The immigration bill meant we would only receive higher skilled migrants. Having realised we needed low skilled workers too, the government introduced the seasonal workers pilot which would allow for just 30,000 foreign agricultural workers, an increase on the 10,000 originally planned. Naturally, the industry reacted with fury, saying the number was too small to fix the crippling shortage. But what can be done by the government to bring back the vast quantity of migrants we so clearly need? I put this question to Tom Bradshaw, who is the Vice President of the National Farmers Union. As we've left the EU, we've got a new immigration policy. Um, you know, we've put up barriers uh, to migration, and I think the government believed that immigration is one of the key, was well, one of the key things that drove the Brexit vote. But we've got to have an immigration immigration route in for enough people, particularly under the seasonal worker scheme. But it goes much further than that as well. It goes into permanent labour. Uh, but that enables workers to come in and work and, uh, in the case of seasonal workers scheme, then return home.
David Camp, Chief Executive of the Association of Lay Providers, said action should be made quicker. There should be a open and transparent evidence gathering process as to how many workers are actually needed. Farmers and their representatives are saying that 30,000 is not enough and are calling for uh, some tens of thousands higher than that. ALP argues that should that number should be determined annually through um, a formal evidence gathering process. So if all our food grown here is rotting in the fields, where are we getting our produce from? Look at this. Sweet corn from Spain, courgettes from Spain, cabbage from Spain, onions from Holland. All of it should be from the UK right now. When I look at the challenge of climate change um, and political instability around the world, and then I couple that with the supply chain shocks that we've seen through COVID, I think there'd never been a worse time to take our eye off food security than now. We saw um, George Yusa speaking at the CLA conference, and he spoke a lot more about food and, and self-sufficiency than he has done in recent times. And, and last week, I, I asked Daniel Zeitner in the shadow cabinet or shadow team, DEFRA team, um, and then and uh, Victoria Prentice um, about whether or not they were going to make a commitment to British self-sufficiency. And I think we'll see a figure coming out from the Labour team. I think they will make a commitment to self-sufficiency and growing it. Britain is at a critical point in its food production. If the government doesn't act now, we face further food shortages. DEFRA was unavailable for comment, but a government spokesperson said, The UK has a highly resistant food supply chain, which has coped well in responding to unprecedented challenges. We want employers to make long-term investments in the UK domestic workforce and our plan for jobs is helping people across the country retrain, build new skills and get back into work. For farmers right now, the one certainty is uncertainty.